Hi guys, welcome to a new video where we'll be creating a web app uh, using the Azure Cloud Shell. So without wasting time, I'll be following this particular exercise from Microsoft and I'll give you, this is part of the learning paths that you have or the modules that you have in your AC204 MS LAN, uh, what do you call, resources. So I'm just going to follow that. I'll add this link to the end of the video if you uh like it uh, let's just jump into it cool so how to access powershell is you need to have a, a basic subscription essentially then what you need is you need to be able to access the azure portal in the azure portal you then see your subscription and the subscription you then can go to resource groups and you'll be able to create the resource so without wasting time when you use cloud shell as I clicked on this is that icon for Cloud Shell. If you look at this command, it's re requesting Cloud Shell, connecting to terminal, then it opens that. On your first attempt, chances are it will create something along this line where it will create a Cloud Shell uh, with a resource group. In that resource group, what it essentially does is it creates a storage account. In that storage account, it will then create, um, what do you call, it will just, create a file share essentially. So this is required for you to be able to run Cloud Shell. This is because all the commands, histories, and that, 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 that you want to store can be stored in that particular uh, storage account essentially. So cool. Without wasting time, I'm just gonna, uh, what do you call, run a couple of commands that will help us do this. So on the documentations, when you when you look at what uh, is prescribed by Microsoft, what, um, what they say here is, uh, I'll just check for my folder structure. So there you can see that I have a cloud drive. Then what I want to do is a folder where actually I'm going to store my, what do you call I'm going to store my uh, application. So let's call it HTML apps. That's what they call it on Microsoft Docs as, as well. And if I go there, you see that I have that folder now. Then what I want to do is I want to actually navigate into HTML into HTML app. If I do that in there, you'll see the folder is empty. So cool. What I then need to do is there's a Git um, link that I copied from the Microsoft document. This basically gives you a styled uh, basic HTML application. Cool. That's correct. And once I've done that, I'm going to just do that. You can see that this is the folder that I was cloning. On the URL, you can see the name there essentially. So I'm gonna just go into that folder. Then, if I do there, you'll see that it has a couple of CSS folders, fonts, image folder, and HTML uh, file. Uh, what do you call a JS folder license and a README essentially? Cool. If I do that, then there's another command. So the key command here is az web app app right and after that i'm gonna i'll explain it later location west europe you can use whatever set of uh, locations that are supported by azure there's a couple of ways to do that because that i'm not gonna do the, uh i'm not gonna go through that process so cool what i'm gonna do is call this application much uh much much something okay let's call it much something that's the name of the uh, application or the api or the web app that we are creating ourselves then i'm going to specify html then. so cool let me just explain a bit here this command here what you see here is the web app what would happen is it will create a bunch of resources that are required to create a web app mainly it will create a uh, what you call a resource group because i didn't specify a resource group on this command it will uh, what do you call create an app service plan it will also create a resource group or oh, as i mentioned resource group so this thing here does two things it creates the web application or the app service if the app service does not exist if it exists it then updates it with the content so currently it will update or push all of these things that we have here it will push it to the app service cool let's do that with some time so if you look at uh, the command there it says the web app that does not exist right so it was checking that and here you can see that it's creating a resource group 
after creating a resource group, it's actually creating an app service plan for us. After creating an app service plan, that's now when it's creating the web app that we call uh, what call much something. We'll go. Uh, that's that. Basically, there after creating the app service, it's doing the default configurations there. Then here it's creating a zip of the content that I have in the current folder. So the folder that I ran this command, which is that HTML thing, it's zipping everything in that folder and then updating, uploading it into my app service. Then they, uh, what do you call it? it, tells me that you can launch your app at, on this URL settings. Uh, okay, cool. Da, 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 da. This is basically the response from the command that I ran. Cool, I'm just gonna follow this uh, URL for now. Titled. Oh no, why? Right. Let me show you guys the application. Cool. As the application, it looks like that. As your app saves a sample static uh, HTML site. Cool. Then if I go to my resources, this is what I'm particularly interested in. Remember, I'm in my subscription. In my subscription, you have that resource group that was created. Remember here, it said it created the resource group RG114. That's that. Inside that RG, it said it created an app service plan. Here's the app service plan. If you click on this, essentially, you can house a couple of uh what you call app services, Azure functions, and the likes in here. You know, I shouldn't have clicked on that because it looks like it's taking forever to load. I'm not interested in that. Cool. So that, what we are created in is much something, which was our web app. That's what we were creating with this particular command, or that was our end goal. If I click on that, uh, okay, well, it's still loading. I don't know why it's taking forever to do this. I wonder why. Connection. Cool. So it's basically loading. That is my overview from for my web app. So on your web app, you have a couple of uh, matrices. So if there were requests coming in and all of that, I'd see those type of information here. Here's the URL to the what do you call it, to the application itself, what we just accessed here, we accessed it with HTTP, this is the HTTPS version. Uh, here is the app service plan. You can see that we are using a free app service plan essentially there. There's a couple of things that you can configure on the side here. Uh, let's see, for example, let me just try something. Okay, cool, if you go to advanced tools, this is added information though. If you are not familiar with this, this is advanced tool. If you click on that, you can essentially log on to what do you call your applications uh, folders. So you can explore the folders themselves. Okay, cool. While well, that is opening, let me just look for something else. Okay, this is configurations, your application settings, da 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 da. You find them in here. I don't know why. Uh, cool, this is my app settings. You can see that you have default app settings. You could have a web config, say, in your application or an app settings. The settings will trump those ones in your app settings or whatever, uh, or your web config, I mean. So there's app settings, connection strings. If you wanted to connect to, a, let's say, a storage account or a database or whatever, you put your connection strings there. Uh, these things are encrypted at the rest. Then there's a couple of configurations that go there. This is application settings, so app settings and connection strings. Then you have the settings here where basically you set your tech stack as much as you could. So you see it supports .NET, Python, PHP, and Java. Witness 64, 32 bits, uh, all of those type of things. How you'd want to do debugging, remote debugging, da 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 da. Cool. 
default documents. This is uh, normal uh, stuff to say where is the entry point and da 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 da. Then path mapping. If you had multiple applications running in one, you could set a path. So by default, it's set to web root. If your folder, let's say for example, in your files, your content are actually not sitting in, in uh, index.html. Say for example, it's not sitting on the root folder on the uh, what you call of your application. You typically point this using a virtual application path essentially. Well, okay, this doesn't want to show you guys something cool but i'll just continue with the the what do you call? continue with uh, what i'm doing i want to do this though i need to show you guys something cool cool something wrong with microsoft cool the next step is because you saw how our application looks at the moment uh, come on because you saw how our application looks i'm just gonna uh, open visual studio code to then uh what do you call manipulate some of the html there and i'll uh, show you guys how to how to make that uh cool i'm just gonna be in cloud shell what i'm gonna do is code index uh, dot html so this command does some magic when you look at this it actually open the code editor for me here where i'm opening the file uh, index.html so if i wanted to uh, because there's a couple of folders there let's see let me just show you now uh when i did okay cool let me just do this again there there you can see that there's a readme there so i can say code uh readme uh, so the code editor essentially will open the readme folder there see that's that's what it's in the readme i want to actually edit the html so cool currently our website has that da, 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 the title and the web app so what i wanted to do here is just change the title here and say watch something like 18 that's the title so it will change the text there and h1 uh, demo app update cool the scripts there da, da, da. actually don't like this Microsoft there let's just do that and say something cool this Coming. Coming. Okay, cool. That, that. Then once I do that, uh, there's a way to save this. Okay, cool. I click Control S shortcut. It saved it. So if I do an update again, let me just see uh, how to save. Cool. you can see there there's a dot that shows me that this thing is actually not saved so if i save it that's that and after doing the changes what what are the commands that you typically use to make push these updates to this website of ours remember what i said with the web app command to say that the web app command uh, creates or updates depending on what we have at a particular situation so if the web app already exists you don't create it but if it doesn't exist, if uh, if it doesn't exist, it creates it. So in our case, because it exists, we are expecting it not to be recreated. So you see what uh, what it does. They checked if the web app exists and it found the web app. Then why is it creating an app series plan? That's interesting. Okay, good editor it should be able to. Okay. Why did that happen? It's just taking that now. Oop. That's the app service plan there. So cool, our web application basically it was updated. If I come here, I click refresh, 
we should be able to see the new changes and voila. So let me just see something on this command. I noticed something that I didn't expect, which is creating the app service plan. So it basically checks and finds it. Well, it says creating app service plan, but the app service plan already exists. Okay, so, makes sense. Thank you very much, guys.